Right, we're approaching Cobar in uh, New South Wales far west. I've got the um, external right rear camera activated. I can slew it around. Fantastic. Let's just do a simple circuit around town for starters. actually. We'll go west. Let's go to the uh, left skid cam. There we go. Looking across town as we head west on the north side. The airport's down there to the southeast. I reckon we should land on that uh, playing ground right there. We'll go and have a croissant and a coffee. Uh, I might even try landing from the skid cam view for something different. Not, we want to get a lot slower. 50, 40. Watch the tree. Get 20 knots. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was almost <laughs> fatal. Luckily, the excess power of this thing saved me at the last moment. Here we go. And down. Whew. So I've got to say, it's a lot easier landing these things um, from these external camera views. So I've got to work out how to get this kind of perception of the height from the cockpit. So it's my next, next task. Anyway, welcome to Coba. Right, so more Egg beater practicing Cobar. Got my view sorted. Feet on pedals. Left pedal down and collective up. So fantastic reflections on that little lake. And up here we seem to have some old diggings. Yeah, wow, that looks dangerous. Nice. So I'm heading north through, looks like a petrol station, I reckon, that group of buildings there. Let's head north through town. here a racetrack I think yep let's see if we can fly around it
Yes. Awesome. And let's put down... Where? Uh, there's buildings to the left I think will do. So pick a landing spot. Uh, okay, the patch of green between them. In fact, let's land exactly between them. At the edge of the shadow there. So landing spot picked. Focusing on that. Letting my uh, perspective guide me in. And we're about here and down. Boom, done. Without the boom, and yeah, super cool. Okay, the engine sound we're hearing is from the pit special. What I'm here for is to look at the light effects and the 3D modeling on this Bell 407. Now, if I pull the collective up, the engine's off, by the way. It's hard to discern, but the blades are changing angle. But let's look at the more obvious features. Uh, watch the reflections as the uh, blades pass the exhaust stack. And the uh, fuselage. Now watch the shadows pass over the fuselage. Look at the uh, sun being reflected on the metallic parts of the uh, whatever you call it, the bits that, that the uh, rotor blades attach to. Absolutely top quality. Yep, not much more to say really. I'll just let it run out to two minutes and enjoy. Exploring Cobar in uh, far west New South Wales. It's morning, is it? No, it's afternoon. 15.54. Okay, since I feel that I'm getting better at landings, let's try the old circle strafe. So I've got left pedal right stick trying to get the nose pointed at the tower it's kind of working yeah I'll try it from the um, now I'm back to the start let's try it from the skid cam right a bit high it's adjust on the fly. Oops, not that much pedal. It seems <laughs> it's actually harder for me. Right, let's keep the tower in sight. Right, that's working. I'm telling you why it was shonky because I had my head tracking still engaged it wasn't a fixed camera view all right now it's fixed let's try this so if I keep uh, keep the tower in the same Ooh, yeah takes constant finessing 
it seems. Okay, well, it's something to practice more, but at least I'm getting a handle on it again to get back in the pit. Right. Excellent. Let's land in this little park. Is it a park? Uh, I think it's just somebody's backyard. Let's land next to the lovely little lake with the lovely reflections. Nice. Right, so pick a landing spot just before that tree. This will be a steep approach, but let's, let's do it. Get back to the proper view. Pick the landing spot, keep looking at it. Flying down to it. Straightening up. Almost came down too hard, but... Whew. And what a pleasant vista. Fantastic. Just enjoy those reflections. So, return to Kobar. Why? Because I'm here. And uh, anywhere is good for chopper practice, it seems to me. Uh, let's land in this park land in the nearest corner of this park. Cancel the trim. I've got my eyes on the landing zone. Keeping focused on that. When that disappears behind the dash, just look next to it. Kick it round violently. And boom, landed short. And in the bushes. Okay. Let's try the next corner. So this practicing at night, I found it very surprisingly helped me, um, rightly or wrongly. And what it got me to do is focus on the landing zone because that's all you can see at night. So I want to land just before these bushes. Before, let's land uh, just before that white patch. So I'm looking at that area. Here it is, here it comes, and we are down. Yeah, pretty damn smooth. So prior I'd been looking at horizon, looking down, looking up, looking down, using skid cameras, all kinds of things. Uh, none of which gave me a consistent result, but touch wood, this is. Okay, I'm going to land before these bushes. Look at the landing zone. Keep eyes on that and just let the limbs guide me in towards that kind of a glide slope thing. I think I just touched actually. And boom, there we go. Let's uh, try the next corner. Pick a landing spot. Um, something, okay, that building. Nearest corner of. Focus on that, so. Get my speed and everything happening and altitude. Kind of judge a glide slope down to it. Here we go. And we are down. <laughs> hey, I think I've cracked it. Let's try the building in the far corner. Well, I've cracked, when I say cracked it, I've cracked landing this thing like an aeroplane. Um, doesn't mean I've cracked hovering. Well, many other things. But still, one step at a time. Right, looking for that tree just before the building. Pitch 
entering rail on land. Around about there, a bit further. Uh, a little bit short. Probably a couple of metres short, but still. Not good enough to land on a rooftop, but good enough to land in a park. Excellent. So this is an interesting development. I'm pretty sure they don't do this IRL. But I'm finding that uh, for the moment, practicing chopper landings at night with the uh, with the lights on, obviously, as you can see, without without the lights, um, let's turn them off again. Uh, yeah, that's like suicide, but with them on, uh, you can only see what's in that small circle. Turns out, clever designers have put that circle uh, where it needs to be. And I think what's happening is it's forcing me, well, I've got no option, there's no distractions. That's what I'm trying to say. So landing at night with the landing light on in the chopper, you've got no other points of reference you can use except what's in that small circle of light. And it turns out that's what you really need apparently to uh, to look at. So I'm looking ahead, I'm looking what I can see the texture down there and uh, I try to land on the number. It's doing the job. I'm not coming down too hard. Could knock me down with a feather, I'll just do a couple more. See, it's just black out there. Climb a bit, you can see, okay, I'm going to land on that arrow. See, so climb a bit, you can see further. Now, I'm just looking at the arrow. And as I get closer to it, I get lower. And I'll probably bugger it up now, let's see how we go. Looking down now for the texture, tells me my height, and I'm just about to go past it, but that's touchdown now. Yeah, and who would have guessed? Not me, but wow. Okay. Taking off from Cobar Racetrack. Let's go straight ahead. Maybe I'll try to do a vertical take off. I mean that's what I should be able to do in a helicopter. Yep, pretty vertical. Nice. Right. Across the racetrack between these two buildings. Okay. Fail. Between these two buildings and make sure there's nobody around. Yep. And... Yep, not much room to spare. Okay, we're on the north... north west... north heading to west end of town. And we've got here another digging. Yep. So there's diggings and... Uh, Holes in the ground everywhere around here. It's very interesting. Let's go up to this reservoir. Let's follow the road. Checking for traffic. About 40 feet altitude, 50 feet. About 40 knots, 60 knots, sorry. Let's fly anti clockwise around this.
fantastic colours. And we'll land here, just before the bushes. Okay, way short. I did lose sight of him. But that ain't no excuse. Well, okay, let's try it from here. I'll land on that light patch just in front of the bush. Yeah, this is terrible. Yeah, I'm all over the shop there. All right, let's recalibrate. Go around, try again. Cancel trim. I'm looking for just before those bushes. Right. Better. Yep. Yeah. Okay. More fun and games in Cobar. I'm at Cobar in New South Wales Far West experimenting with uh, no cockpit view which I've got pretty much matched to my cockpit view. See if it makes it any easier to control this agile aircraft. Bell 407 in particular the problem I have main problem is judging the altitude just before touchdown uh, I'm often a meter or two too high there we go I just touched down and I didn't think I was that low so I think there yeah, I think I was within a metre of the ground there, so this might be the answer for me. If I can see the ground texture just in front of me. Now, yep, I got it. I can judge uh, where the ground is, which would be about there. Or... Oh, I didn't get that one. There. Yeah. So your eyes kind of read the texture. <laughs> Be careful there. I just tilted it on the front of the skids. Um, grass really helps too, of course. So I think... Oops. Is it touch? I get into a hover. And I think about uh, about there. Yep. That's if you know somewhat nose down attitude. Now I'll try and do the same from um, in here. Maybe if I just lock down. It's probably what those little windows are for. Mind you, it doesn't make it much when you can't see the horizon. Yeah, it's hard to get into a hover. Okay, so I'm in a hover. And now I should look down and say now. Okay, maybe it's just a matter of doing that. Jeez, I've got to watch that. Um, also, I've 
got my right that's my zoomed in or hard view let's try my normal view so I can quickly go from oh I'm doing it again um must have trim on um right just let me get my widths together right so reset the view so I'm going to go from horizon to ground right let's try again Right, so I've got a, let's say, look at any any object out there, like a red tree, I can say I'm in a hover, and now look down, and touch down is about, now, okay, it's about a metre too high, let's try again, let's look at the pine tree, so looking out there, getting stable-ish, now looking down, touch down, now. All right, well, that might be a habit I've got to cultivate now. It's just looking down as I get near the ground. Because looking out there, I don't seem to be able to judge the height well at all. But down here, there is actually plenty of information in the sim. All right. Gives me something to work on. We're out at Cobar in New South Wales, far west, flying to Waypoint 2 in the Cobar Gold Diggers mission. We're flying to the F Fort Burke Hill Lookout Mine. So we're on the um, eastern end of the Pig Hill, Pig Gold Mine. I'll just swing past this hill, back over it, and then turn north to the Fort Burke Hill Mine. Speaking slow because helicopter. Got to use all your arms and legs to fly these things, which is great when it works. I mean, it works, but when I'm when I get it, my act together is what I really mean. Okay, well, so far so good. Just had a cup of tea and a few lamingtons, so uh, feeling pretty good. So I pretty much follow this road, I think, will take us up to the next waypoint, the next mine. Um, and on my particular moving map I've got here, I can't read the name of the road, not to worry. Now whipping along at 90 knots. And see two enormous um, radio towers ahead. And I think they're actually on the hill where the mine is. Let's see what we've got here. 2.1 miles away, it looks about right. Looks like a bit of a mine there too. Let's just swing past that. Should have looked first. Look before before turn. Yeah, okay. Another another mine. Uh, be part of that peak hill complex I guess and we've got a pit here I think all right these are the things you find in choppers which um, you don't necessarily notice at mark one uh, I'm just trying to get a bit closer there yeah looks a bit all right get the feet moving looks a bit narrow for my um, current skills to enter but nonetheless a scary pit which is very cool. Right. And some more tailings, I guess they are up over here. Let's have a quick whiz around. Forgetting that, uh, in a helicopter, the throttle comes back to accelerate. Not 
forward. Throttle by throttle, I mean collective, of course. Right, let's get the feet going. So, yep, don't want to really want to fly sideways everywhere. A bit of sideways here though, why not? Yeah, there we go, a bit of circle strafing. Awesome. Hours of fun. Right, okay, let's push on. Reset my trim. There we go. So it doesn't look like much from here, but as we get closer, you'll see an enormous. Let's try to get into a hover. There we go. Maybe we can descend into it. concentration here and now I'm really appreciating the wind wing stick making lots of micro adjustments beautiful yep we're descending all right we are below ground level let's uh, <laughs> I don't know what's I think I bumped. Okay, I think I got an emergency. I'm going to just destroy my um, tail rotor, I believe. Yes, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I am knackered, as we say, down here in Oz. Um, okay, well, at least I'm over. flat ground again. I've got some semblance of control there. I'll try to put it down. Actually, no, what? I don't think I did. I think it was just an over torque situation. That's T O R Q U E. I'm always doing the over T A L K, but I'm going to put it down and then jump out and uh, have a look. See if there's any damage. But right, we're down. Right, let me jump outside. Okay, no, we're still in one piece. Just keep the head down. Right, I don't know what happened there. Hazards of um, flying into huge uh, pits. Yep. All right, we'll call that one done. I think I need a, another cup of tea, and we'll come back later after I've calmed down. We're at Peak Gold Mines in Cobar, just exploring the main mine site. Just had a nice cup of tea, some lamingtons. A few Fredo frogs for dessert. And we'll continue our look around the uh, very large facility. The 
So I've got a very large hill here to the east, which I did land on earlier, and by pure dumb luck avoided riding off the tail boom on I landed next to this mound with the tail sitting right next to the, the mound behind it which I didn't even see so I was just lucky right let's uh, why am I going backwards as I said earlier the Bell 407 has got so much power I can just brute force out of dumb situations like like that which is uh, which is great now let's reset the trim it might help me and try flying forwards that's our next destination over there I believe So yeah, I've got to do some more research on uh, well, mines, how they work, and what this, uh, I guess this is what, maybe it's what they call tailings, what they dig out of the mine shafts, gets dumped out over there perhaps. Let's put it down over here. See what's happening in these structures. Always looking for another excuse to have a cup of tea. Get the legs moving. Can't have too many landing practices. And boy, do I need them. I will park on the road. Almost down. And... Now. Yeah. Okay. Way off that time. Still really bad at judging height in this thing. Anyway, plenty to see and uh, very picturesque, fun to explore, especially in a chopper peak gold mines. So I'm at Peak Gold Mine in Koba, and uh, this is quite uh, disturbing. What a lucky escape! I've just landed on top of this hill and when I go to the external camera, uh, look how close my tail rotor is to that mound which I did not even see behind me. So, pure dumb luck. But I'll take it. I'll definitely make sure I translate forward now when I take off. So let's go. I'll put a bit of forward stick in actually. You can see it kind of kneeling down. A collective lift the stick right. Yeah, that was uh, totally by luck rather than judgment. I didn't wreck the chopper. Let's have a look where we landed. Well, this thing climbs quick. Yeah, between those two mounds there. Old mine shafts. Were those two? Yep, pretty, yeah, pretty sure I was. So that kind of answers my question too about where's the gold. Um, I think... Maybe they started digging for it in that hill. And I guess there's shafts elsewhere. And this big grey area out here I think is one of the ponds where they separate the gold out, I'd imagine. But this chopper's got some get up and go. Which is uh, just as well. I can brute force my way out of most situations in it. Lacking the required finesse. I 
thought the thought the engine was a bit quiet. Right, that's where I usually like to set it. It's pretty quiet in this cockpit. Which I don't mind. So yeah, massive. I reckon uh, maybe they pump the slurry into the middle of the hill and it drains. I don't know. I know almost nothing about mining and uh, that's obvious. Something worth uh, looking into. Anyway. That's a brief look at uh, the first gold mine uh, in this Coba Gold Diggers mission. Let's uh, sit down near the admin buildings and have a cuppa. Have a cuppa. Chuck a prawn on the barbie. Maybe and have a few lamingtons if we're lucky. There's some more. I wonder if that's another shaft there. Uh, I think I'll park right here. I'm trying to park on that shadow. Keep the legs moving. It's kind of a maverick, don't think, just do situation. Actually, there we go, we're down. Yeah. Very cool. Taking off from Cobar in New South Wales far west. Let's see if we can get into a bit of a hover situation here. Okay, let's hoverish. Hoverish. And I want to turn the landing lights off. There we go. Right, so first stop is Peak Gold Mines, which is uh, southeast of the airport and a few miles away. How far? Four miles. There we go. 4.2. Very cool. So characteristic red colour of the Aussie Outback. Lots of red ochre and lots of iron actually. Fe203 from memory. Iron oxide characteristically red in colour. Uh, right, let's get some trim going. A few notches forward. Cool, we're doing 60 odd knots. About 230 feet. Looking pretty good. A few clouds around. But nothing indicating rain. Right, going up to 90 knots. So. Yeah, my, I'm just reading my notes. Main activity mining, 1896 was the first. This is the first mine, actually, I think, out here. And there's also high-grade copper mines in the area. So on this flight, we check out a few peak gold mines. Two of those, copper mine. Yep. Righto. So 2.8 miles. Uh, it's a bit to the right. Let's climb a bit and uh, get an overview as we approach. Add some collective, going through 350 feet. Yeah, so if you come in about 500 feet, which we'll get to in a moment, it's very easy to see. There we go, 500 feet. And it's got this grey, cool grey colour, really contrasts <laughs> dramatically with what's around it. Alright, 
20 knots. About 500 feet, right around altimeter. Here it is, peak gold mines. So, not sure. I, I guess this is where they wash the uh, wash the uh, earth and separate the gold. Gold being one of the heaviest uh, elements, of course. Um, and I guess the actual mine shaft under, underground rather than open cut obviously they're not above the ground but a lot of the mines we see are obviously open cut because not much to see with the underground mines and in this case I guess we're looking at like I said where they the ponds where they separate the gold out Probably land on that hill actually. Let's see if we can do that. Why not? Right. Today's landing challenge. Let's see how we go. At a speed. Speed's pretty good. This is going to be dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. Okay, get the feet moving. First chopper flight of the day, I'm always very, very, very stiff on the feet. And I never make it down the first time. Let's go around again. Uh, loosen up. Wriggle the shoulders. Move the wrists. Get the legs moving, right. Now we're getting more in sync with the machine. And I can't blame the... Um, speaking of shafts, it looks like there's one here actually. Maybe we can park right next to it. Maybe it's an old, uh, old mine shaft. There we go, we're down. After a fashion. Yeah, what was I trying to say? Um, I forgot. Loosening up, that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't blame the controls because I've got these win-wing uh, latest gear and the Thrustmaster Pendulo rudders. You couldn't ask for better controls. So there we are. Peak gold mines. Right, taking off from Fort Burke Lookout. Fort Burke Hill Lookout. Coba and going back to the airport. And wow, what a panorama that is. Let's fly once around the hill. degrees left just checking where the airport is yep roughly this direction I think that's the buildings at about one o'clock
can usually find a road that, or two or three, that lead to the airport in most places. People have got to get there. Right, we've got to be close now. Oh, I can see it. Dead ahead. Hi oh, guys. There you going? Let's check there's nobody coming in. Looks clear. Here we are. Bit of activity over there. It's land near the fuel, I think. Fuel? No, it's a biplane, is it? Wow, it is. What is that? Oh, it'd be a pit special, I think. Our first time I've seen one. Here, yep. Sam, I think it says. That's cool. Let's wander over and have a look. Excellent. Right now we're heading uh, down the down the west side of Cobar. There it is. Is that a car? That's a house. Right. So approaching a northwest corner. land in this property. So I want to land next to the swimming pool. Not too bad. Uh, would have liked to have been closer, but sidestep the house and let's try landing uh, near the garage. Okay, the edge of the shadow. Two landings for the price of one. Right, let's continue around town. See you guys. Watch out for the power lines here, and we're heading to, I think, uh, yes, we are heading in from the north. Power lines, where are they? A bit further on. To, um, Fort Burke Hill. Look out.
it's going to land up there. Can we go under these? No, I don't think so. Very respectfully make my way over them. And let's uh, drive up the road to the lockout. So I want to land near that building and I'll pick this exact spot when I get closer. Uh, right, so let's go to closer to the edge. Pick a spot, um, that dark green spot. in front of us. Uh, a bit short, okay. And down. Whew -wee. there we go. Fort Burke lookout near Coba. Very nice. Right here I'm taking off from Fort Burke Hill Lookout and we're at the Peak Gold Mine. So let's see if we can get off the ground some semblance of grace. Yeah, not too bad. Not too good either. And whoa, that's like a whew, roller coaster ride, that drop off. Fantastic. Let's, let's use our uh, external cams here, which I have uh, remote controls on. There we go. That's nice. Very cool. to the left side and the left skid cam very cool yep you need one chopper in the fleet for this um, scenic flying um, that's why I put one in the world tour packages now a chopper, supersonic jet, uh, float planes so you can land on lakes and rivers and bush aircraft so you can land anywhere else. And they're all slow except for the jet. So I mean a chopper can land down there, a float plane can land on a lake bush plane land on any bit of ground that's kind of flat so you've got it all covered let's go back to the uh, that view nice
by the tall masts. Yeah, they're a thousand feet above the ground according to my radar altimeter. Righto. Let's uh, press on to Koba. Flying out of Koba Airport to Waypoint 2, which is the Fort Burke Hill lookout and the associated uh, peak gold mine which we can see with the two big radio towers straight ahead it's, uh, radio towers courtesy of Tabaray Australian all the Australian radio masts for 10 bucks what a deal a couple of thousand of them and also we love VFR Region 3, which is about 160,000 objects in this part of the world. So you, if you don't have those, you might not see the towers, but you'll still see the hill and the huge mine pit in a minute or so. There's Cobar over to the left. forward a bit more, we're doing about 90 knots, 500 feet, we'll get a good view of the pit as we approach, a couple of smaller masts there, I'm going to slow up a bit, we've just gone past 100 knots, I'll do a counterclockwise circuit. Actually, I'll do, do clockwise so I can look out my own window rather than across a cockpit. There we go. Scary deep. And I actually walked down there earlier on you can walk all the way to the bottom along that road which is super cool and very impressive that the autogen scenery renders that level of detail now two years into the sim unbelievable two or three years two and a half years um, and look at the stability of the edge of the uh, cliffs too. Doesn't morph, used to morph like crazy a couple of years ago and now look at it, it's almost, pardon the pun, rock solid. A little bit of morphing we can see there but by and large uh, not much. Very cool. Right now let's pick a spot to land I'd say uh, between those towers looks good. Look out for the uh, various mine shafts around the place. Right, cancel the trim. Try to follow the road up to the top there. Easier said than done. <laughs> Here we go. Keep those feet moving. Right. Balancing act. Here we go. We're down in one piece. 
Very nice. Taking off from Cobar in New South Wales Far West and flying directly to Waypoint 2, which is Fort Burke Hill Mine. Let's get the feet sorted out here. There we go. Right. Right, oh, let's get the trim sorted out. Trim, a couple of clicks down. Looking pretty good. And we're on the way. Just want to swap my map with my other hand. Boom, we're in. Right. Um, yep, we're in the right, heading in the right direction. In fact, we can see it straight after takeoff now about one o'clock. And let's climb. We're at 100 feet. Let's go to about 500 feet. So waypoint one's down yonder. That away. Two hundred feet. Uh, what's the time? It's afternoon, four o'clock, three thirty, three fifty, close to four o'clock. There's Cobar coming up at ten o'clock. Three hundred feet, three fifty, four hundred. Four fifty. Five hundred, right. Now, depending on the state of your sim, you might or might not have the radi uh, radio masts. I've got Australian radio masts by Tabaret installed, plus we love VFR Region 3. So here we are, 500 feet, we're going to get a good view of the, uh, the mine pit as we approach. I'm going to slow off a bit, a, or a lot rather, 100 knots. Five hundred feet, collectives right down, pulling back on the stick, and we're down to forty knots. Okay. Now when I try to get my window facing the pit. It's pretty deep. Yep, there it is. You can actually had a bit of a walk earlier on. You can walk all the way to the bottom, which is along that road, that light coloured road, which is uh, super cool. Bear in mind, this is not handcrafted uh, terrain. This is the default. And the edges of the pit all very stable. So you can see how far the sims come in the last couple of years. Previously these kind of cliff edges will be morphing all the time. You can see it morphing a little bit. But uh, by and large, very stable. Okay, let's see if we can land on the top. Here. As usual, I end up going backwards. Right, let's try again. 
get my head in the game, get my feet moving. Those towers are magnificent and game changing. Right, let's slow up. Actually, why don't I try to land on that green patch or this bit of road right on the edge? Let's try that. I think we're going to do it. 